Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hey, everyone. How's it going? This is episode number 134. And today, as usual with expression episodes, there will be two parts. In part one, so in this episode, we'll be going over the expression to blow off steam. In part two, which will be posted shortly, I'll tell you the story of Starbucks. Yep, I think you know them. I'm sure you've seen a store here and there, maybe on every corner, depending on the city you're in. But how much do you actually know about this famous coffee company? Do you know why they're called Starbucks? Do you know who the woman is on the logo? Well, there are plenty of other interesting facts that I'll share in part two. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, no, not Starbucks. but On the other hand, there are a lot of you whose mouths started watering just at the name of the company, because you might be thinking of your favorite drink from there. It doesn't matter if you prefer a fancy Italian cappuccino or a venti latte from Starbucks. Hearing the Starbucks story is definitely interesting, I promise you. And there's a lot of good English vocabulary in part two. So be sure to stay tuned for it. Let's start with part one, which, as usual, begins with a joke. Are you ready? What's it called when you steal someone's coffee? Do you know? A mugging. (laughs) Mug is a noun and a verb. M-U-G. A mug as a noun, is a cup with a handle in which you might put coffee, tea, or another hot beverage. We also call a mug just simply a coffee cup, but mug sounds cozy. It sounds nice. It gives me thoughts of winter. To mug as a verb means to attack and rob someone in a public place. Let me repeat. To attack and rob in a public place. So there is some physical contact. If a bad guy hits an innocent passerby, so someone walking down the street, and then steals their phone or wallet, we'd say that that innocent person was mugged. If someone pushes you and then pulls your purse or wallet out of your hands, we'd say you were mugged. Getting mugged is serious. If someone says they were mugged, it will probably leave you wondering, oh my God, are you hurt? Are you okay? Now, those are the two meanings of mug, the coffee cup and then this attacking, robbing situation. So. Does the joke make sense? Let's hear it one more time. What's it called when you steal someone's coffee? A mugging. (laughs) So you get the idea of them stealing that mug directly from the table or from your hands. And yeah, that's funny. So if this ever happens to you, if your friend steals your cup of coffee or your warm drink, Just for a sip, you can slip this into conversation. You can say, hey, you mugged me. Let's move on to the expression of the day. We'll first learn the individual words of to blow off steam. To blow is a verb, and it means to make currents of air. On my birthday, I blow out birthday candles usually on a cake or on cupcakes. Off can be an adverb, a preposition, 
And it means the opposite of on or um, it can mean away from. In fall, the wind blows leaves off the trees and they fall onto the ground. Steam, as you heat up water, it'll transform into steam, which is a mist of condensed water droplets in the air. Steam is visible, so you can see it as it moves upwards from a boiling pot, maybe even from a hot cup of coffee. If you have a hot cup of coffee, you might want to blow on it to cool it down, or you might literally blow off steam coming from it. There is, however, a figurative meaning to to blow off steam. The expression to blow off steam means to get rid of strong emotions. If you're sad, angry, frustrated, if you have any sort of pent-up emotion, so emotion that you're storing within you, within your mind and soul, in your body, uh, you might look for an outlet to blow off steam. In other words, to release it, to get rid of it, to let it loose. For example, you could do some sort of physical activity, like going to the gym, running a mile around your neighborhood, lifting weights. These are great ways to help you blow off steam. Once you start exercising, you'll stop worrying or thinking about problems or stress that you might have. Others blow off steam by going to a therapist, talking to a good friend, or maybe walking to a coffee shop to relax. There are thousands of ways to blow off steam, right? To get rid of strong emotion. The expression dates back to the mid-1800s, about 100 years after the steam engine was invented. According to Grammarist, a steam engine has a boiler that heats up, but if it gets too hot, it can explode. To avoid disaster, a valve can be opened to release the pressure or tension within. The valve helps release excess steam. So it's sort of like in humans as well. We need that outlet. We need a way to release the steam or release our pent-up emotion. So my question for you is, how do you blow off steam? Let's go through some more examples of this expression in normal, everyday contexts. Example number one. Imagine you're in high school and you just got your report card. On it, you can see that you didn't do so well this semester And you know that when your parents see that report card, they're going to be furious. You might tell your friends, I'm going to hit up the gym to blow off some steam. In other words, I'm going to visit the gym to release my frustration before telling my parents. I'm going to hit up the gym to blow off some steam. By doing so, you will be calm and collected when you do talk to your parents. Example number two. Imagine that you have been getting in a lot of fights with your roommate. Everything sets them off. In other words, everything makes them angry. If you leave a dish in the sink, they yell at you. If you leave your jacket on the couch, they complain. This creates a negative atmosphere at home and puts you in a bad mood. Your best friend knows this and tells you, if you ever want to blow off steam, just call me. We can go on a walk, go grab ice cream, you can vent if you need to. In other words, I can be your outlet. I'll be there if you need to get rid of your emotions. I'll be there if you need to blow off steam. Example number three, imagine you work for an events agency and you've spent the last three months working around the clock. You've been working nonstop. You've been planning food and drink, 
organizing venues and travel plans for employees at your company. And by the end of it all, you feel overly exhausted and just over it. You feel overworked. You might want to take a trip, perhaps to a tropical location or just have a spa day to blow off steam. Once again, to blow off steam is to get rid of pent-up emotions from anger and frustration, pressure, tension, concern, anything that is stored within. Before we move on to the pronunciation exercise, I mentioned the verb to vent. And it's sort of fitting uh, with this expression because when you vent, you verbally let out your frustration. Venting sounds like this. I'm going to act a little bit. Hey, Jess, is that you? Gosh, I've been needing to talk to someone. I hate my roommate. He's such a pig. He leaves his dishes all over the place, his dirty clothes on the floor. I'm so frustrated. I'm sorry. I needed to vent. I just needed to get this off my chest. Right? So to vent is when we blow off steam by speaking to someone. Let's move on to the pronunciation exercise. We're going to use the phrase, you need to blow off steam. Why not run a little? Repeat after me. You. You need. You need to blow off steam. You need to blow off steam. Why not run a little? You need to blow off steam. Why not run a little? And the conjugation, repeat after me. I blew off steam at the gym. You blew off steam at the gym. She blew off steam at the gym. He blew off steam at the gym. It blew off steam at the gym. We blew off steam at the gym. They blew off steam at the gym. That's it for the first part of this two-part episode. Be sure to stay tuned for part two if you want to learn all about the story of Starbucks. Hope you're having a nice day, and until next time, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.